Welcome back. Uh, if you're just joining us, Massachusetts versus Mario Batali, the celebrity chef, he's on trial, alleged to have groped a woman while taking selfies with her uh, in a Boston restaurant. That alleged victim has just taken the stand as the first witness for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The judge has ordered us not to show her face. So we're gonna hear her, she's on the stand in the courtroom, can't see her face. Um, let's go in and hear what she has to say. Base your name, spelling your last name for us. My name is Natalie Teeny, T E N E. Um, can you tell us where you work? Yep, I work for a company called, um, it's had a few names over the years. Um, and now our name is Lone Wolf, and we're a software company. Okay, and what types of software? What do you what do you do there? Yep, so um, we do real estate related software like front end websites, back end transaction management, um, customer relationship management, CRM, and back end. And I do um, post sales part of that, which is onboarding clients and implementing our software for them. Okay, is that the field that you've always been in? Um, for the most part, I mean, ever since college, um, I've worked for a few different software companies and startup companies in Boston. Okay. Um, and have you had any other jobs in that time? Any second jobs, things like that? Um, I did work for a staffing agency um, and, and, you know, was a recruiter and, and I did some, some work for one of my friends um, okay. as well. Um, and where do you live? Where are you currently living? I live in Newton, and I've, I've lived in Newton pretty much for the last 10, 15 years. Okay. Um, and who do you live with in Newton? I live with my mother. Okay. Um, and have you lived with your mom for the past 10, 15 years, how, however long you've been in Newton? Um, yeah, for the most part. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to turn your attention to the evening of March 31st, 2007. Okay. Were you living in Newton with your mother at that time? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, do you remember what night of the week that was? That was a Friday night. Okay. Um, what did you plan to do that night? Um, so, um, I planned to meet up with one of my friends. Um, his name is Jonathan. And um, usually on Friday nights, we would go to um, our regular place. We would go to this restaurant called Town. Okay, in Back where, Bay. Uh, where was Town? So Town is on Boylston Street in Back Bay. Okay. Um, and what is, um, what's around town, like if you could orient us to totally. the neighborhood? So there. around town is, um, right next to it is the Prudential Center. And right within the Prudential Center and right next to it is um, Ely, which is like a food court restaurant. Okay. And do you know if town's still open today? Um, town's not open anymore, no. Okay. Um, and you mentioned on, on March 31st that evening you were, you were going to meet your friend Jonathan there. Is that right? That's right, yes. Um, and you said that you've been there before? Yeah, we've been there several times. We were pretty much regulars at town. Okay. Um, and is that because Jonathan lived close by to yep. there? Yep, okay. Jonathan lived um, at the time in some apartment buildings that were connected to the Prudential, and the Prudential is right next to town. They're prob probably just a few feet away. Okay. Sure. Um, do you know if Jonathan still lives there? I don't, I don't know where Jonathan lives or what he's doing today. Okay. Um, and when you went to town on March 31st, 2017, you said that was a Friday night, is that right? That's right, yes. Um, do you remember around what time you would have gotten there that night? Um, I probably got there around 9 or 9.30. Okay. And how did you get there that evening? Um, I took my car and I, and I drove to the back bay and, and parked on Newbury Street or some kind of street nearby and then walked over to town to meet Jonathan. Okay. And when you say you drove there, did you drive from your home in Newton? Yes, that's right. Okay. Um, so you get there around 9, 9.30, you drove in. Um, when you got to town that night, what'd you do? Uh, I think I saw Jonathan at, at the bar, um, got a seat next to him and uh, said, hey, how's it going? Okay. Took a seat. Um, so you sat at the bar that night? Yes, we did. And was it, um, did you meet anyone else there besides John, who we were friends with, or was it just you and Jonathan? It was, it was just me and Jonathan there. Okay. Um, and you and Jonathan, were you just friends? Yeah, we were just friends, and um, 
at a certain point, I worked for Jonathan very briefly. Okay. Um, we were both kind of in that recruiting world, so I kind of helped him with some startup business that he was running. Okay. Um, so when you get there, you're sitting at the bar. Can you describe what town looked like, like the interior? Yeah, so um, in town, there are there's a long bar, and... Um, Behind that bar, so you know, if you if you walk into the restaurant, um, you'll see on your right that there are um, there's a large bar, and there's also some tables, um, like high top bar tables and kind of smaller like two tops um, for people to sit. And then on the opposite side, like behind the bar, there's a larger restaurant and like the bathrooms and and things like that. So we were in the front part of the restaurant at the at the long bar that was there. Okay. So sitting at the actual bar? Right? Yep, yep. Okay. Exactly. Um, that night when you were there, um, was it a busy Friday night? About how many people would you say were in the Yeah, I mean it was it was pretty lively. Um, I don't I don't recall how many people were there, you know, at a given time, but I'd say groups were coming in and out. Um, I think I remember one kind of large party and they might have dispersed like throughout the restaurant, but it was a pretty lively bar. Okay. And what was the lighting like in there that Um, it's a pretty dimly lit for the most part bar. It's it's very dark. It has like dark wood, dark leather, um, kind of like those sepia toned lights. Um, kind of like, like that. Um, now you said you've been to town before. Um, this night when you get there, um, would you classify this as just a typical night at this bar for you? Yeah, absolutely. Did you um, have any food there that night? Yes. Um, did you eat dinner there, if you remember? Yep, we had dinner there. Um, I think I even got dessert. <laughs> okay. um, did you have anything to drink that night? Yes. Do you remember what you had to drink that um, night? I had sparkling wine. Okay. Um, and do you know if you had more than one glass of sparkling wine? I had I had more than one, but not more than two glasses of wine. Okay. Um, and why was that? Because I'm really not a big drinker, and I also had to drive myself home. Okay. So. Okay. Um, at some point later that night, as the night went on, did you recognize someone take a seat at the bar a few seats away from you? Um. Yes, I did. And who was that? That was Mario Batali. And how did you know that it was? I knew that it was Mario Batali because he has a very distinctive look. Um, certain things about the way that he dresses um, are very distinctive. Also, um, Italy had opened somewhat recently, and his face was on a lot of the products in the store. So since I was right next door to Italy, I recognized him, and it kind of made sense. Oh, that's the guy from Italy. He's, he's here. And in terms of, of recognizing him, what did you know him as? Like, who was he in the food? I knew him as a chef. He'd been on the Food Network as, at a certain point. Um, he was, his face was all over Italy um, as well. And, and Italy had opened it a short time? Yeah, there. yeah, it had opened um, probably within a year or two um, of that time. I don't I don't know exactly when that, that opened. Okay. And when you first noticed sitting at the bar. Do you remember around what time that was at? Maybe a little after midnight. Okay. Um, and that was, was that the first time that evening that you noticed him in the bar? Yes. Okay. Um, when you first noticed him down the bar from you, do you remember where you were relative to him? What I mean by that is how many seats away in the bar? Just a, just a few seats away, probably probably not more than the distance between you and me. Okay. Um, when you saw him there, did you notice him to be with any other people? Um, I, I thought I saw him with another gentleman, but I don't know if that gentleman was actually with him or if he was just another patron that had been, you know, having a conversation um, with him. Okay, okay. Um... When you see Mr. Batali come in, you 
recognize him. Uh, what did you then do? Well, I didn't. I didn't actually see him enter. I just noticed him once he was seated. Okay. Um, and after I noticed him, I took my phone out, or it, you know, my phone was in my hand, and I took a picture like over my shoulder of him and some some other gentleman at the bar. Okay. And <coughs> when you took that picture, were you seated at the bar? I was seated. Yes. Okay. And where was your friend Jonathan? Jonathan was sitting right next to me, and he was on my he was on my right. Okay. So would it be fair to say that Jonathan was on your right, and then Mr. Batali was on your left? Yes. Okay. Um, and why did you take that picture of Mr. Just because um, it was kind of at the time it was kind of interesting. Like, oh, you know, guess who's here? <laughs> Mario Batali, the guy from Italy, is like right here. <laughs> Just drive, but I believe they are what we think they are. So no objection unless something comes up that looks different than I thought. Okay, so you're going to display them on the uh, yes, your honor. So they'll be admitted into evidence uh, as long as they are what you say they are. Parties proposing that that be these two things be group exhibit one, the one, one and two. two. All right. So the envelope and the photos one, and then this will be two. Okay. Is this the, the person you thought may have been with Mr. Ali before? I, I 
I thought so, but I, I'm really not sure who this person is, if it's just a patron or if it's his friend or oh, who this person is. Uh, and that person in the, the orange looking scarf, is that uh, Mr. Fatali? That's right, yes. Okay. Uh, when you take this picture, what happened? So after I took that photo, um, Jonathan, who was sitting right next to me, basically said something to the effect of, wow, that's really embarrassing. Like, why did you do that? And I said, I didn't know that wasn't allowed. And he said, that's, that's so embarrassing. Like, oh my God, you're, you're definitely caught. Like, you're busted. Like, how, why, did you, why did you even take that photo? And I was like, I thought it was just a harmless photo. OK. And did it seem to, to you and um, to Jonathan that, yeah. that Mr. Vitali had caught you taking that photo? Yep, so right, right after that. So the limited nature of the question. All right, I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. When you took that picture, how did Mr. Vitali seem to respond? Um, well, I wasn't, I wasn't actually looking at Vitaly respond after I'd taken that photo, because I took it over my shoulder and I was facing Jonathan. So Jonathan had said to me, you're caught, look at you now, look at how embarrassing, he's calling you over there. So you better go over there and you better delete that photo. And what time did you take that photo? Right? Um, a little after 12.30. Okay, and on that exhibit, that's in front of you. Natalie Tini on the stand describing that moment where she took a selfie of Mario Batali. From there, she says he groped her. We're going to hear that part of the story next. Stay with us. Also, Johnny Depp Amber Heard reviewing what's ahead. Stay with us. They are. Welcome back to Court TV Live. Another big week here at Court TV. We're, of course, all in on Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard in Fairfax, Virginia. The showdown continues next Monday. Everything's on hold this week. Both sides getting a break for a scheduled week-long pause. Heard faces cross-examination when court reconvenes next Monday. And in Boston, the trial for celebrity chef Mario Batali underway this morning. He faces one misdemeanor charge of indecent assault and battery. This morning, he waived his right to a jury trial and elected to have a bench trial, meaning the judge will decide his fate. Batali accused of inappropriately touching and kissing a woman without her consent in 2017 while she was taking selfies with him inside a restaurant. That alleged victim on the stand right now facing direct examination. The judge has ruled that our cameras can't show her face, but we can listen to her testimony, and this testimony is crucial for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and their case against the celebrity chef. Let's go back into court right where we left off. Uh, exhibit, that's in front of you. Does that have that exact timestamp on it? It does. It says on 1236 and 17 seconds. Okay. So after that happens, uh, what did you do? So after Jonathan had said, you're caught. This is the most embarrassing thing ever. Um, he, he said to me, look, Vitaly is calling you. Mario Vitaly, he's go over there and delete the photo. And, you know, Mario Vitaly pictured there. He was summoning me to come over to where his seat was at the bar. And did you go over there? I did go over there. And when you went over there, what happened? When I went over there, I... I started walking and I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. I can delete the picture right now. Like, I didn't mean anything of it. Um, Did you have your phone out at that point? Yeah, I had my phone ready and I had that photo pulled up, ready ready to be deleted because um, I, that's why I was going over there. Okay. And when you... Did you, did you offer to Mr. Vitale to delete the photo at that point? Yeah, I said, hey, I'm really sorry. Like, you know, if you want, I, I can delete it. I didn't mean anything from it. Hey, you know my bad. And how did he respond to that? He said, no, it was fine. No, no worries. And hey, let's actually take some selfies instead. Okay. And when Mr. Vitale offered to take some selfies with you, what did you think of that? Is there an objection to what she thought her honor? Overruled. You can answer. What did you, what did you think when he made that offer to take selfies um, with you? I said, sure, okay. What's wrong with the selfie? And was that... Um, you knew Mr. Vitar Mr. Vitali was a, a celebrity, is that right? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, to a certain point, I mean, he, he, in a way, I mean, 
he was associated with Italy, and that was kind of a big deal in Boston, so. Okay. Did you think at that point that it would be cool to get like a celebrity photo with him? Um, I'll overrule the objection this time. Um, I didn't really, I didn't really think anything of it at the time. I was just like, oh, okay, a selfie, cool. Like, taken a hundred selfies before, so. Okay. Um, you mentioned, and we see in that picture that there's a, there's another man in that, in that frame. When you walk over to Mr. Vitali, uh, was that man still there? That man had moved out of the way, either to like the other side of Vitali or some, some other place in, in the bar. But I don't, I don't, I don't recall that other gentleman. Um, once, once I had been summoned over to, to, to Vitali. Okay. And did you ever see him again? Not that I remember. Okay. Um, did you agree to take some selfies with Mr. Vitali? I did. Um, who took those pictures? Who that, took those selfies? That was me. I was taking them. Okay. And did you take them with your own phone? Those were with my phone, yes. Okay. When you took the selfies, what part of your body and what part of Mr. Vitali's body can you see in the photos? Um, our heads, our faces, our shoulders, um, just, just the upper parts of the body and, and really whatever can fit in the frame is, as you're holding your hand out. Um, so not really anything below like a, like a portrait. Okay, so what you would see in a typical selfie yeah. picture frame. Exactly. Okay. Um, how many selfies did you take, if you remember? Um, I think around 10. And do you remember what times those pictures were taken at? Um, th those were just shortly after uh, the first photo was taken, um, within a minute or so. Um, and, and if I'm looking at this, um, it says exactly at 12.37 a.m. Okay, so the next, the next photo was taken at 12.37? Yes. Can we pull that picture up as 12.37 a.m. one? Um, can you tell us what's going on in this picture, Mustini? Yep, yeah, that's the that's the first selfie um, with Mario Vitali, and um, he has one of his arms around me. He has his face pressed up against mine, and um, he's pulling my body closer towards his. Okay. Um, and is this a still photograph? Um, this this one, yes. Okay. Um, can we see the next photo, please? Okay, we're looking at 1237 and two. Is this you and Mr. Vitali again? Yes, it is. What's Mr. Vitali doing? Um, he's, um, we can see. Yep, he's kissing the side of my face. He has his other arm uh, wrapped around the, the back of me. Okay. And that's, and that's what we can like see in the photo. Okay. Can we see the next photo, please? This is 1237 and three. What's going on here? Um, more of the same, um, trying to take another selfie. Um, Vitaly's face is pressed up against mine and it's making some kind of like kissy face. Okay. Can you see that next photo, please? This is 1237 a.m. Or what's happening in this photo? Um, this, is, this is another attempt at a selfie. Um, and, and we're standing and, and now Vitaly's looking at the camera. Um, Kind of doing a like a pose. Okay. Um, and when you say attempt at a selfie, what do you mean by that? Um. Well, a few things. So we had we had taken a few selfies. Um, I didn't I didn't think any of them were good. Like 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 no one's looking at the camera. Like it's very. Um, it's not like a selfie that I would like take with my friend and we're both like looking at the camera and smiling. It's like, it's just not right. And also while this was happening, like his hands were in sensitive areas, touching me, um, touching my body. So it was, it was like a selfie, but other things were happening simultaneously. Okay, okay. Um. Can we see the next photo, please? And this is 1237, photo 5. Is this a still photo again? Um, yes. And again, taken at 1237? Yes. And let's see the next photo, please. What? Oops. Oh, happened. Okay. So that looks like it's a video. What, what is that 
have this teeny that we just um, looked at. We can play for you. Yeah, so that's that's a live photo. So I guess, you know, one of the features on the iPhone is takes these like six second short videos of the of the photo um, and it includes some audio so that's that's what that was and then that's yeah <clears throat> what time was that that was that video taken at? that was at 12 40 a.m okay and 12 seconds and we see the next uh live photo please side of the face. Um, his other hand that can't be seen is, is touching my body in sensitive areas. Okay. Can we see the next slide photo, please? saying one more, one more to get another selfie. Um, can we see the last video, please? Okay. Is that the last live, live photo that, that you took that video? Yes, it is. Okay. Now that we've seen those those ten selfies, five of the still photos, five of the left the right photos, I just want to ask you some, some questions about those. We can watch them again if need be. Okay. Um, what are you taking these pictures? Can you describe the position you're in relative to Mr. Vitali? Yep. So I'm I'm standing, and um, Martin Vitali is sitting on his seat um, at the bar. I'm on the um, right side. And, well, he's to my left, and um, and he's seated. Okay. So would it be fair to say that you are standing next to him, taking those pictures while he's sitting down? On, yes. On a bar stool. Yes. Okay. Um, and you, what hand were you taking those selfies with? I was taking them with my right hand. Okay. And Mr. Vitali is on your left side. Yes. Okay. And in, in many of those those photographs, you can see Mr. Vitaly's left hand pulling your face. Yeah. Can you tell us what his right hand was doing? Yep, so his right hand is all over my breast, all over my rear end, um, in between my legs, um, gra grabbing me in a way that I've never, <laughs> I've never been touched before like that, like like squeezing in between my legs, squeezing my vagina to pull me closer to him, like as if as if that's a normal way to grab someone, just between the legs to, to pull them towards you. Okay. Um, and he was trying to pull you towards him as he sat in the bar stool? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know in these pictures um, where on your body he was touching or which pictures? Were you able, are you able to distinguish that? I, I really can't distinguish that because it all happened so fast and it was happening essentially the whole time in different different parts. 
So at first, or I shouldn't even say which order, but there was touching of my breasts, touching of my rear end, touching of my sensitive feminine areas, um, in between my legs, t touching all over my face, um, his lips on the side of my face, his tongue in my ear. Um, okay. It was it was just it was just a lot happening. And these these pictures. All right, the alleged victim in the Mario Batali groping case on the stand for the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We'll get you back into the courtroom, right where we left off, right after this. Joincalibrate.com. Back to Court TV Live, our cameras are bringing you live coverage of Massachusetts versus celebrity chef Mario Batali while the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial is on a week long break. Amber Heard is expected back on the witness stand a week from today, where she will begin the grueling cross examination, highly anticipated cross examination via Johnny Depp's defense team. Meanwhile, in Boston, the judge is hearing testimony from the woman who accused celebrity chef. Batali of groping her and kissing her while they were taking a selfie in a bar in Boston. This morning, Batali waived his right to a jury trial and elected instead for a bench trial, meaning the judge is going to decide this case on his own. Let's go back into court right now where the alleged victim is facing questions from the prosecution. This is direct about the incident that night. These, these pictures, this incident, happens in between 1237 and 1240, is that right? That's right, yes. Um, and it looks like from the timestamps on the photo, some pictures are taken at 1237 and some pictures are taken at 1240, is that right? That's right. And do you remember um, what was happening kind of in between when, you, when the pictures are taken at, at 1237 and when the pictures are taken at 1240? So this, this incident did happen several years ago. So my, my memory on every single, you know, those two or three minutes in between, like the photos, isn't, I don't remember every single detail perfectly clearly, um, but I do remember having kind of a conversation um, with, with Mario Batali. Okay, and what was that conversation about? So certain, certain aspects of the conversation were like, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Okay. Um, and do you remember if that conversation was while you were trying to take these pictures? It was either, it was either, you know, like during or, or after. I don't remember exactly when, but I do remember that we had a very brief conversation. Okay. okay. We do. Very, very, just a few words with each other. Okay. And when, when you're taking these pictures, when you can feel Mr. Vitale's hand on your body, um, how are you feeling in that moment? What was going through your mind? I'm really shocked, um, surprised, alarmed. Did, um, you, did you feel like you knew what to do in that moment? Like, I'm going to sustain, sustain the objection. How did you react in that moment to that? Um, I kind of froze up, to be honest. Um, Put on a smile to kind of de-escalate the situation. Um, just became very nervous and kind of uncomfortable. I was really shocked, alarmed. Um, in, easy. in some of these, the live photographs, you can see you um, smiling, sort of laughing. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so at first, when I walked over there, and Vitaly said, yeah, it's great, no problem, let's take some selfies. That's kind of the typical selfie pose, you know, smile and let's have a photo together, make it nice. Um, so that was part of it. And then I'm just, I'm just a very, sometimes I laugh or smile at inappropriate times. I'm just a very kind of giggly, nervous person. Um, Did you feel nervous in that moment? Absolutely, yeah. And when you felt that way, what did you try to do as you were taking these selfies and you felt Mr. Vitaly's hand on your body? I tried to pull back. I tried to <laughs> look at the photos to see if what, what, is, what is going on here. Um, this guy's eyes aren't open in any of these photos. Um, what did that make you think? That, well, he was definitely drunk. I could smell it. 
the way he was talking, his words were very slow, not like, um, you know, if you're just having a regular conversation, whereas if you're drunk, your words take a long time to come out. And when do you think that you realized Mr. Vitali was, was drunk that day? Um, probably within, within those first five photos, it became really clear to me that, like, this, this guy is wasted, for lack of better terms. Were you still trying to get some good photos at that point? Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm not really sure because at that point, he kept saying one more, one more. So it wasn't really, at a certain point, I was like, okay, there's no good photo here. This is not, this is not about photos. This is, this is him touching me, grabbing me and saying one more, one more, but his hand is on my vagina now. It's, so, so it was kind of like, okay, wait, this is, this is not one more. This, these selfies aren't going to be better. This, no one, no, he's, his eyes aren't going to be open. No one's going to be smiling. This is not a normal selfie. This is something way else. This is escalated past, past just a selfie. Okay. Okay. How did you get what you realized was no longer just selfie taking to stop? I that was it. I was like, okay, well, I gotta go. And it was it was part of the conversation actually with with Vitali that I immediately made, I it was like, I gotta end this, I've gotta go. Chills like came over my body um, when he asked me to join him in his hotel room at the Mandarin Oriental. And what did he say about that? Um, basically, hey, come back to my room tonight. I'm, st I'm just like, what? No. And he's like, I'm staying at the Mandarin Oriental, which, if you're familiar with um, the Prudential Center or Boylston Street, is right next to Ely as well. Okay. Um, how did you respond to that when he asked you to come back to his room? Absolutely not. That's, I, I got chills. I walked right back to Jonathan. I was like, all right, have a good night. See ya. And walked right back over to my seat at the bar with Jonathan. Okay. Um, at any point, did anyone else take a photo of you and, and Mr. Batali that night? Not that I know of, no. Okay. Um, the, the man who groped you in the bar that night is in these photos with you. Do you see him sitting in court today? I do. Could you please identify him using a piece of clothing he's wearing? He's wearing a, a blue collared shirt with a navy zip up and a suit jacket. Thank you. Your Honor, please let the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. Any objection, Attorney Fuller? Yeah, I have an objection. Yeah. All right, the record will reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Keeney, how are you feeling in those moments as you walked away from the defendant? Kind of like mortified, disgusted, uh, had that like kind of sensation that this was not right. Um, so just overall very uncomfortable. And it, it was at that point when the night was over for me. I, I went back over to Jonathan and I said, we've, we've got to go. Let's, let's settle up the tab, let's leave cash and just walk out. Okay. And um, how did it feel to you that that, um, that incident had happened in terms of the, the speed of the event? Did it happen fast? Did it happen slow? Somewhere in between? I'd say it happened very fast. And walking away from that, um, you mentioned you felt shocked and confused by that. Um, is that something um, that you, did you share that with Jonathan when you walked back over to him? Um, Jonathan made a comment to me that was like, what was that all about? Who was that guy grabbing you? And that's Objection. what Objection. Grounds. You're safe. Sustained. And Ms. Dean, when you walked back over and you said to, to Jonathan, let's get out of here, your night was over at that point. Um, did you did you leave pretty much right after that? Pretty much right after that, I think Jonathan was like, Well, I'm finishing my Objection. drink. Like Objection. I'm sustained. Here. That's sustained, sustained as well. You know, he he needed time, we still needed to Just get hold them. on him. Just hold on a moment. Oh, oh, sorry. All right, next question. Good. Uh, so, Ms. Teeny, after you walked back over to Jonathan, um, was it almost immediately after that you left the bar? 
within 10 minutes, you know, after he finished his food or drink, after we paid the bill. Okay. You, you know, we, didn't, we couldn't just walk right out. We had to kind of settle everything up, and then within a few minutes, we were out of there. Okay. Um, and when you left that night, um, where did you go? Um, I went back to my house in Newton. And do you know where Jonathan went? Um, I, I, I think he went right back to his place. If he stopped it anywhere in between, I'm not sure, but eventually he made it to his house at the end of the night. Okay, but you left separately? Yeah, we left totally separately. Okay. He walked one way, I walked the other way. Okay, and, and you went back to your car? Yep, that's right. And, and where'd you go from there? And then I drove home and okay. went back to Newton. Okay. Um, The pictures that we just looked at, did you ever post any of those pictures to your social media? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, after that night, who was the first person you told that the defendant had assaulted you at town that night? I told one of my really close friends at the time, uh, Rachel Buckley, about what had happened. And when did you tell Ms. Buckley what happened, if you remember? The reason you're not seeing Natalie Tini as she testifies is because the judge ordered that uh, we can not show her face during her testimony. She's the alleged victim in the case against Mario Batali. We'll pick it up right where we left off. After this, plus Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, they've got a week off. We don't. We've got lots to talk about. Stay with us. Before Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard resumes driving towards a final verdict, Court TV cameras are taking you to another high-profile trial. Celebrity chef Mario Batali faces a jury charged with indecent assault and battery. And you'll see all the drama inside the courtroom unfold live right here on Court TV. Mario Batali on trial. Live coverage today on Court TV. Welcome back. The alleged victim is on the stand. She is the first of only two witnesses that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is planning to present to the judge in this case against celebrity chef Mario Batali. Let's get you back into the courtroom right where we left off. And keep in mind, the judge has barred us from showing the victim's face. But we can listen to her story. Within within a week or so, I, I don't re I don't recall the exact dates. It was it was quite a while ago, but it was, it was pretty shortly thereafter. Okay. Probably the next maybe the next weekend, two weekends. We would hang out a lot. So. Okay. Um, do you remember why you didn't tell her that weekend, like the Saturday, Sunday after this happened? Because she was going on like a trip or some type of vacation, so I just. I didn't know if it would be appropriate to be like, hey, pause your vacation. Like, I need to tell you about this thing that happened to me. So I, I just figured, oh, it's not a good time. Like, she's she's got other priorities right now. Let me just let her enjoy her vacation. Okay. Um, so the next time, when, when you told her, um, was it the next time that you saw her in person? Yeah, it would have had to been. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it was the very next time or... You know, if it was it was on the weekend and they were just you know sitting hanging out, but it was it was it was definitely in person and one of the times that I had seen her. Okay. Um, in the okay. weeks. And you said probably within about a week. Yes. Okay. Um, do you remember where you were when you told her about what happened to you that night? Mom. I think it was probably in her apartment. Um, we hung out there all the time. I don't I don't remember exactly. It was either you know, in her apartment where we were hanging out, or, you know, in my car as we were driving, you know, to some destination, but it would, it would have been one of those two places. Okay, and where did Miss Buckley live at the time? She lived in Cambridge at the time. Okay. When you told her what happened to you that night, why do you remember telling her? How his hands were all over me, how I was so shocked that something like this could happen, you know, it went from a selfie to, Objection to how she felt. This is about the first complaint of what she said, Your Honor. Uh, I'm going to overrule the objection. Sorry. Next question. Uh, if you could just tell us 
what what you were saying to her, what you conveyed to her at that point. This happened. I was out with Jonathan. We were next door to Italy. The guy that's associated, or one of the main faces of Italy, was was there when we went to go take the selfie. He had his hands all over my body, all over sensitive areas in between my legs, my rear end, my breasts. His face was all over mine. His tongue was in my ear at a certain point, I didn't think. Um, and I just I just told her that, and then and then just my general sentiments that. Like, let's never eat at Italy again. <laughs> and when you when you told her that, um, would you say that this was an extensive or a detailed conversation? I mean, it was, it was one of those conversations where I told her what happened, um, probably in a few minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And then we both agreed, like, that, that was wrong. We're never, we're never going back to Italy again. Like, that's, that's so wrong. And, okay. And when you um, told Miss Buckley about what had happened to you that night, do you remember if anybody else was there at that time during that conversation? Um, it could have been her boyfriend, Peter, at the time um, might have been there. He was he was kind of always with us, hanging out. Um, was Peter involved in the conversation? Not really. He was just kind of sitting there um, in the house or wherever we were. but. He kind of was always just there, not really in the conversation with us, but he, he might have been there. Okay, so would it be fair to say that you don't have a, a memory of specifically telling Peter what happened to you? No. Okay. Um, fast forwarding a little bit to December of 2017, um, did you connect with the reporter from Eater? E the Eater publication about Mario Batali? Yes, I did. Um, this, this would be a direction uh, getting into oh, yeah. your staff, just outstanding objection. All right, I'll note your objection. Thank you, Your Honor. And, Ms. T, what led you to reach out to that Eater reporter? Um, because I wanted to let her know what happened to me in the bar that night and show her or, well, I just wanted to let her know what had happened to me in the bar. And why do you want to let her know what had happened to you? What did you read that made you uh, want to tell the story about what happened to you? Well, in the article that I read in Eater, it was, it was other women saying that Vitaly had done unsavory things and had sexually <laughs> abuse them in some way or another. And how did that make you feel about what had happened to you in town that night? Objection. I'm going to overrule the objection. To, to me, I mean, it, it really made me feel like, wow, I'm, I wasn't making that up. Like, this wasn't an isolated incident. Like, that, that's, that's who this person I mean, I don't. I, I want. I want to say the full answer. Did Did you feel before you read that article like what had happened to you that night was an isolated incident? I, I, I'll sustain the objection. How did you feel before you read the article in the year about what had happened to you that night? Overall, just embarrassed. Um, kind of just living with it. Um, I just felt like, okay, this is something that happened to me. Um, it was embarrassing. It was really confusing. And Did you feel like there was anything you could do about it? Before reading that article, no. I felt like totally powerless. I felt like I would lost bodily autonomy even in that moment. Um, there was really nothing to do. Like, what, what do you do? I, I had no idea of what what options or what path I could even take or, or, or who would listen to me. And that's and that's why I talked to the reporter. She 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 was listening to the to what I have to say. So that that feeling that you had up until December twenty seventeen, how did that change when you read that article about about the when other I, when I read that article I was like, wow, this is this is real. This isn't just this isn't just one night at town. This is this is constant. And what did you do after you after you read that article? Um, 
what did you what did you do about it? Yeah, so I, I emailed the reporter and I said, hey, you know, this this happened to me too. I have a story and I have photos that also go along with with what happened to, to basically prove that I was I was with Battalion, this was all happening and, and you know the photos right here. Okay. And did the uh, eater reporter get back to you? She did, yes. And and what happened from there? She and I um, had a conversation I think that day. Um, she basically said, hey we'll be in touch like hey what the reporter said, this is going further than All right, that's, uh, that's sustained. Okay. Next question. Did the reporter you told your story to, um, did she end up at that time um, publishing a story about what happened to you at town that night with mm -hmm. the seven? Not at that time. Did you stay in touch with her? I did. And in May of 2018, um, did a story about the defendant come out in 60 minutes? Yes. Objection, objection. Uh, I'm sorry about the article, now we're talking about 60 minutes, and now I don't know where we're going. Well, I'm going to overrule right, the objection. Uh, there's an objection. Let's bring in Rick King, West Palm Beach, Florida former lieutenant in uh, the police force and also is a now a trial attorney. Rick, what, what's your take on this uh, direct examination from the witness? She seems very um, succinct with her answers. We can't see her and that's, you know, it's hard to evaluate uh, that, but um, your, your thoughts. So one of the great things about Core TV is I get to watch this almost as a juror and evaluate it through the mind of a criminal defense lawyer. And also, you know, tempered with that, you know, as a police officer for many years, I I listen. And here's what my take on it is: like, they they've made a good effort to uh, talk about the timeline of the photographs, and her her claims that he was grabbing her in places that are very inappropriate, to me, don't match up to the pictures. That's the take that I got from it. I think the prosecutor's doing a great job of laying it out, but at the end of the day, you know, I I I think about um, not only women that I know, but, but men that I know, if you are grabbed in an inappropriate place during the span of 10 photos, because presumably it didn't happen at the last picture, so it happened all as we're going along, I don't expect that you would continue taking the pictures. That's the question that I have, and that's what they're going to have to answer. And I think that her previous testimony or her previous, uh, the impeachment that's coming out about her previous um, possibly inaccurate or uh, misleading testimony is going to be a problem for her. Mm, yeah, I mean, interesting to the cross examination. And to your point, if you're taking photo after photo uh, and you're getting grabbed inappropriately, the defense is saying you sh we should see, you know, some of the hands some on reaction. the breast. But also, you would think you'd see a grimace or a like, ooh, you know, some sort of uh, <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, you got your tongue in my ear. Uh, but uh, that doesn't seem to be <laughs> taking place. Um, we're going to pick up that testimony uh, at the top of the hour. We're going to watch uh, her all you know, throughout the day here. Uh, but when we come back, we're going to talk to Rick about Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. It's a big week in that both sides are preparing for Amber Heard's cross-examination. It's all going to come down a week from today in Fairfax, Virginia. We'll talk about that next.